My friends, I just want to take the opportunity to welcome you all here to St. Coleman's Church. Anne and boys, uh, members of the Smith family, relatives, neighbours, and many friends and parishioners. A day that none of us wants to see coming. We're here today to celebrate the life of Liam and to give thanks to God for for everything that has been part and parcel of his life and of course with the great crowd of people that is here and indeed yesterday evening well that's evidence enough of the great esteem and the great respect that there was for this this man and of course it doesn't come to us as any great surprise because we know that Liam was a very very big community man and did so much and so much behind the scenes in a very, very quiet and private way. We all come today we've, from different angles, we have different memories, but combined together, they are all wonderful, wonderful memories. And on that note, we give thanks to God for his life and for, for everything, as I say, that has been part of that life, much shorter, than what we want human life to be. But we know also that that is not our call. Here in the sanctuary, I'd like to uh, welcome the priests kind of celebrating the Mass today, Fathers Billy Sheridan and John O'Boyle and Brendan Keeley and James Quinn. I'd like to welcome Father Christopher Clark. Of course, Christopher is a first cousin of Liam, and he will now be leading us in today's liturgy. We can stand, please. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with you. My dear friends, on behalf of Anne and her sons, Ben, Harry, Sam, Joss, and Alex, his sister, Maura, and brothers, Tony, Pori, Tom, and Joseph, and the extended family, I welcome you this, morning, this afternoon to this funeral mass for Liam. As always, before we begin mass, we have a few moments of silence. Uniting ourselves with Christ, who said, I am the resurrection and the life. He also prayed himself before he died, Father, I want those you've given me to be with me where I am, so that they may behold the glory that you have given me. Our prayer today is that Liam will see that glory of God and know peace. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my, my brothers, brothers and sisters, sisters I have greatly sinned through my fault, have done and what I have failed to do, through my, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, pardon our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O oh God Almighty Father, our faith professes that your Son died and rose again. Mercifully grant that through this mystery, your servant Liam, whom you have called, for, who has fallen asleep in Christ, may rejoice to rise again through him who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And we can sit, please. And ben, ben will do the first reading, and George the second. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The virtuous man, though he may die before his time, will find rest. Length of days is not what makes age honorable nor number of years the true measure of life. 
understanding this man's grey hairs, untarnished light, this ripe old age, coming to, perfe coming to perfection in so short a while. He achieved long life, his soul being pleased to the Lord. He was, he was taken him quickly from the wickedness around him, yet people look on, uncomprehending. It does not enter their heads that grace and mercy await the chosen of the Lord and protection, his holy ones. The word of the Lord. Second reading, a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. For us, our homeland is in heaven, and from heaven comes the Savior we are waiting for, the Lord Jesus Christ. And he will transfigure those bodies of ours into copies of his glorious body. He will do this by the same power with which he can subdue the whole universe. The word of the Lord. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow nor weep or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying at a single too, but. And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers, the field grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that they, that even Solomon in all his glory was not dressed, was not dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes 
the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you people of little faith? The Gospel of the Lord. Dear friends, in the face of death of a loved one, uh, we all feel helpless. And we have regrets, no doubt. And this is so because when death strikes, there's always things we'd love to have done and said. But even if we had done and said all those things, we would compile another list of things to be said and done. And this is the nature of death. It's a cheat and it will always cheat us. So being able to be here this morning or this afternoon, even the smallest things has great, have great significance when it comes to taking leave of a loved one. So the first thing I'd say is that none of us here should undervalue our presence at this mass this afternoon. We believe that our prayer and our presence is of importance. It is the one positive thing we know, according to our faith, that will benefit Lean. Cardinal Newman wrote a poem once called The Dream of Gerontius, and it is the story of the soul of Gerontius on its way to God. And along that, he was accompanied by his guardian angel. And at one point of the journey, Gerontius turns towards his guardian angel and asks, who are these voices, these strange yet familiar voices that I hear yonder? The angel replies, these are the voices of those gathered around your coffin on earth praying for you. We believe that our prayer will smooth the path for Liam on his journey to God. It is in that belief that we pray for him and indeed pray for Anne and their five sons, for their sister and brothers. In the face of death of a loved one, we hold ourselves before a great mystery. It's a terrible mystery. It's terrible because it pulls asunder those who are united in love. And when serious illness comes, as in the case of Liam, when that strikes unexpe unexpectedly, and at an age when one would naturally think that one might have a few more decades left of this earth, it is an even greater mystery. The first reading tells us we look on uncomprehending. Death is difficult, death to make sense of, difficult to hold, and especially when there's so much left to be done, so much beautiful things, worthy things, important things, especially the rearing of a young family. This past year has been difficult for Liam and his family. However, Liam was blessed in many ways, but especially in the manner in which he held himself in his sickness. I think to his days after he got his diagnosis, I went to visit him in the Galway Clinic he was asleep, and Anne and I were talking, and she expressed to me uh, maybe her frustration at what had taken place. And she told me that she said to Liam one day, she said, why you, Liam? Why you, Liam? Liam's response to Anne was quite extraordinary. She told me, he said, why not me? This is a man who was given a death sentence. Such a response tells us something of how Liam saw and managed his life. Whether it was something that he was conscious of or not, I do not know, but he certainly was graced in that he embraced life as it unfolded before him, both positively and calmly. I have no doubt that he struggled interiorly to understand and make sense of where his illness brought him. 
But why not me tells us that he saw the possibility of death as being part of life. I'm not sure whether he would have found any consolation in the words that we heard from the Book of Wisdom, but they could serve him as an epitaph, length of days are not what makes life honorable, nor the number of years the true measure of man. Understanding this is man's gray hairs, untarnished life, this is ripe old age. Are they a consolation to us? Well, I don't know, but there are certainly words that we could use in a good way to both understand and shape our lives. Liam lived every day a full and generous life. He was a man who refused to be captured or imprisoned by life's difficulties, even serious illness. His family, his wife and their children were the center of his life. They were his anchor, his strength, his comfort. And from there, he reached out to this community, especially here in Clare Morris, and served that community generously, effectively, and with characteristic modesty and quietly. The words of the gospel come to mind. Do not parade your good deeds before men. He will indeed, as many of you have said, be greatly missed. The last time I brought him communion was about two weeks ago, and I mentioned to him that when I gave him communion, three faces passed through my mind. There were Bamps, Paddy, and Birdie. Liam's face lit up when I said that to him, and he said, that's strange. I've been thinking a lot about them these days. Our Lord did the same thing. He cried out to his father, when he felt vulnerable on the cross. When we feel vulnerable, when our life is threatened, we too call out to our loved ones who have gone before us. We shouldn't doubt that Babs, Paddy and Birdie will be there for Liam now. May he rest in peace. So I'd like to invite uh, members of the family up to lead us in the prayers of the faithful, please. So first pray for our church and we pray for uh, Pope Francis, the Vicar of Christ. Lord, hear us. May Jesus be with all of us now in our sorrow and mourning um, of the loss of Liam. And may he give Anne and Ben and Harry, Sam and Josh and Alex an old family all the grace and the strength to get through this sorrowful time. Lord, hear us. We pray especially today for Anne, Ben, Harry, Sam, Josh and Alex. May the blessings of God be upon them as they mourn the loss of Liam, that in the love and dedication he showed to them, they will find strength and comfort. Lord, hear us. We pray for all our deceased relatives, especially Paddy, Birdie, and Babs, and all the deceased members of the Smiths and the Walsh family. May they enjoy the promise of eternal happiness and may they rest in peace. Lord, hear us. We pray for Liam, who has been taken from us too soon, that the Lord will reward him with peace and joy for all the precious love and memories that he has given us and the good that he so selflessly did for others. Lord, hear us. Lord, we remember all who care for the sick, especially those who cared for Liam in the past year, at home, in the Mayo Hospice, and all the nurses and doctors who helped in his care. May the Lord continue to bless their work and reward them with kindness. Lord, hear us. Lord, 
As we are all aware, Liam was very committed to the town of Clare Morris. We pray for those he worked with in this endeavour and that the Lord will guide them in their continued efforts for the good of the community. Lord, hear us. Thank you. So we ask Our Lady, uh, the Mother of Sorrows, uh, to intercede for each and every one of us in our intentions today as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. I think Harry and Sam are going to bring up the gifts. Pray, my friends, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we pr humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant, Liam, we beseech your mercy that he who died did not doubt your son to be a loving Savior may find in him a merciful judge through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of death might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with the angels, the archangels, the thrones and dominions, and all the hosts and the powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. 
You're indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. And all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you. By the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he took bread and giving thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread, therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of his, the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognize in the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain the inheritance of your saints, especially with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed apostles, glorious martyrs, and all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and the salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, your servant Francis, our Pope, Francis, our Bishop, and all the bishops and clergy and the entire people you gain for your own. Listen, Father, graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you in your compassion O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember, Lean, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who is united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To all of our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with, with him, him and in him, O God, God Almighty Father, Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, Spirit all, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. My friends, we stand now, and it is our great privilege to pray as our Lord Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of our Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. My friends, let us offer each other a sign of peace. Yes. Can kneel, please. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy of the Lamb. Now, just for those who wish to avail of the opportunity to receive uh, Holy Communion, there will be five communion points in the church. There will be two uh, halfway down the side aisles, one in the center aisle, and two of us will also top. For anybody who needs to uh, receive uh, the host, which is gluten-free, uh, that will be available with me at the very top right-hand side.
Let us pray. Lord God, whose Son left us the sacrament of his body for food for the journey, mercifully grant that, strengthened by it, our brother Liam may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And if you'd like to sit down for a few moments, Joseph, uh, Liam's brother, has a few words to say. Good afternoon. I'm pleased to represent the family here today to celebrate Liam's life. First of all, I'd like to thank Father Christopher and Father Peter and Father O'Boyle, and Father O'Boyle who gave us the gift of swimming, and all the concelebrates today for the beautiful Mass we've had. And thanks to Father Christopher and to Father Peter for all their guidance and help over the last few days. And the wonderful music by Maurice, Elaine and Sinead. What can we say about Liam? First and foremost in his life were his family, Anne and their five fine lads, Ben, Harry, Sam, Josh and Alex. His beloved Anne was his anchor and the boys were the light of his life. He was so proud of all their achievements in sport and academia as they, as they moved up to the grades in school and swimming and soccer and football. Liam's other great passions in life were the town of Clermorris and its community, the sport of water polo, and of course, Mayo football. He didn't play much football when he was younger. He, like the rest of us, was a swimmer, thanks to our wonderful mother, Birdie, whom Liam adored. He swam for Clermorris, and in sea swimming circles, he's a bit of a legend, having won the prom swim twice, first in 1981, again in 1994. Through swimming, he got into water polo, and in 1980, Liam was a founder member of Carb Water Polo Club. He played National League with Carb for over 15 years. He wasn't the strongest shot, but he was always in the right place at the right time, like any good striker. In the late 90s, he became Carb's first senior coach. It was at that time that he also started coaching Claremara swimmers to play water polo. He went on to coach Clamoris to a national title at under-16 level in 1999. That game was held here in Clamoris pool at 2 o'clock on a Sunday. And I think it was the first time a water polo game was ever announced at Mass. <laughs> he went on to be Irish water polo junior international team manager for a number of years. But his personal favourite achievement in water polo was coaching Clamoris to the double-double boys and girls under 16 and under 19 champions in the same year, which they achieved in 2002, and that was the first time that had ever been done. And that brings us back to Liam's main passion, the town of Clermorris. As he battled through his illness over the last 15 months, nothing gave him, gave him more joy than to say, let's go for a spin around the town. And we get in the car and drive out by the golf course, and he delighted to see it going so well and then back down to Ardro and look at the town boundary. You know, Joe, if there was one more house here joining the town boundary to that estate, the census population of Clermaris would have been bigger than Westport. Come on, let's drive over by the race course. And he beamed with pride for the town. Driving by the gym complex and the athletic track and the football fields and the new road connecting at the back of the convent and the tennis club and the new swimming pool isn't it all great? And did you know we've had fibre broadband for years? <laughs> and have you walked the new path around the lake yet? Now all we need is the, is the railway connecting back into Galway and we'll move another bit forward. And that was Liam's genius. Always move things forward. No matter what committee he was on or what he was involved with in business or who he was talking to or negotiating with, it was always, how can we move things forward? A discussion here, a nudge in the right direction there, a quiet call with the TD, or a calm talk with the County Council. We didn't get there yet, but we will get there. His determination always won through. 
And he did it in such a way that everybody was involved and brought along and part of the achievement. But you just knew that if Liam wasn't there pushing it all forward, it wouldn't happen. He was very proud to have been elected president of the Claremorris Chamber of Commerce. And we have to thank Eileen Dyer for cajoling him into the chamber at the beginning and giving him a push along the way. Because believe it or not, Liam was actually quite shy underneath it all. And he always did everything with a laugh. He was the king of the witty comment. I remember back in 94, he came out to us in America with Porrick for the World Cup. I picked him up at Logan Airport off the flight from Shannon. And as we walked across the car park in the 100 degree heat, Liam just said, you know, you'd missed a bit of drizzle. <laughs> Liam loved the GA. He may have never got to see Mayo win that, that elusive All-Ireland title, but he knew the future lay in the Football Academy and he supported every way he could at both club and county level. Investing in the youth is the best way to make that dream come true. He took to heart Paddy and Birdie's constant adage, Mulanoga is Chukishi. In his battle with cancer over the last 15 months, Liam has had incredible support. From Anne, of course, who was with them all the way. We want to thank you, Anne. For taking such great care of our brother. And the lads who showed such great love for their father. Anne was supported by her sisters, by her by Sarah, her sister, and her rock. And our own sister Maura. Tanya at the house, and Margaret Garrity, Liam's nurse. We would also like to thank the staff in the clinic, but especially the staff at Mayo Hospice over these last few weeks. They've just been incredible for us. The positive impact Liam has had on his family, on the town of Clare Morris, on his friends, and everyone he encountered along the way will last a long, long time. He's been taken too early, but his legacy will endure. All I know for sure is that Paddy and Birdie would have been very proud of Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for such a touching tribute there to, to, to your brother. One of the most difficult and challenging things I'm sure that you've ever done in your life. Thank you to everybody who's been involved in such a, a lovely dignified way uh, in the ceremony today and Christopher for leading us in, in the mass. We're going to be coming now to the prayers of, of commendation. Uh, at the end of the prayers, um, I'm sorry to say that the weather is not great outside, so 
Um, I don't think the family deserves to be standing in the rain outside for, for people to, to meet them or to sympathise. So we will give the chance for anybody who hasn't yet met them, uh, if you bear with us just at the very end, uh, to do that. We're now going to have the prayers of commendation. During these prayers, the coffin will be blessed as a symbol of baptism, where it all began in our journey of faith. It will be incensed as a mark of respect and symbolizing the offering up of our prayers for the happy repose of his soul. The members of our funeral issue team for this month are Brady and Breach. They will be leading us in the final procession down the main aisle. Before we go our separate ways, let us take our leave of Liam. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend Liam in this sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. Merciful Lord, turn towards us and listen to our prayers. Open the gate of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and we are with you and with Liam forever. After the burial will have taken place, there's an invite from the family to join them for refreshments and uh, after in the McWilliam Park Hotel. Now, I'm, I know that many of you and majority of you have met with the family, but once again, just to give the opportunity for those who have not yet, if you'd like to come up the Cinter Isle now to sympathise with the family.
So now, my friends, if I could invite you to stand and in peace, now we will take Liam to his place of rest. <laughs>